Good morning, guys. Uh, good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to Sunday School. Uh, this morning we've got a good lesson. We're going back uh, to the beginning. Uh, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 1 verses, uh, and all the way through chapter 2, verse 3. Uh, today, and the title of today's lesson is called, How It All Began. Um, our lesson objective today uh, says that we need to understand our world is, through crea is the creation of the Almighty God and not the result of random chance um, and ha happenstance. Uh, therefore, we should worship, worship such a mighty God and treat His creation, especially human beings, with respect uh, and value. So that's our lesson objective today. Um, in the packet that you got uh, last Sunday, uh, this is our... Uh, this is the sheet that you'll get out, uh, how it all began. What it is is uh, this first sheet. It's just a, um, uh, tells you the, uh, the study text, the family thing. It tells you the Bible basics, things we all should know, um, and where this lesson fits in the story of the Bible. Um, uh, just gives you some key truths um, and some things you can t jot down notes as you're going as we're going through our Sunday school lesson today. Uh, so get that out and uh, take some notes, jot down some notes, um, and follow along with us this morning. So uh, again, we're going to be starting out uh, in Genesis chapter one uh, today. In this first part, um, it says most conservative biblical scholars believe Moses was the author of Genesis. So. Uh, we know that Moses uh, wrote the five books, uh, the, five, the first five books of the Old Testament. <clears throat> um, although his name is not mentioned in the book, this belief is due in part to the fact that Moses penned the rest of the Pentateuch. And that's uh, the Pentateuch, that's the first five books of the Bible, okay? Uh, and Genesis serves uh, as a precursor to them. Without Genesis, there would be no foundation uh, upon which uh, to build. Um, so this first part, it says, God is the designer, excuse me, and creator of all things. And this is verses 1 through 25. Um, on the very first page of the Bible, um, of the Old Testament, the reader is introduced. Uh, we're introduced to God here, Genesis 1 to 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven uh, and the earth. So we're introduced to God here. Uh, and we know that God, throughout uh, the whole Bible, he is the main character uh, he is the main one. Um, he is the main character, and witness his power as displayed uh, in creation. The, the wording of the text illustrates uh, that God is decisive, uh, purposeful, uh, and fully uh, in command of every uh, creative act that he's done. Uh, as we read through this, um, you'll know how does he, how did he create everything? Uh, he spoke it. Uh, into existence. That's the power of God, that when he says something, it happens, okay? Uh, when he spoke it into existence, uh, things were made, okay? And that's how we, um, that's how everything was created. Uh, only God has the power and ability to create something um, from nothing, and God did this simply, uh, again, by just speaking the words. God said, okay? As we go through in verse 3, and God said, let there be light, uh, and there was light, and God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place. Uh, and God said, let the earth uh, bring forth grass. Uh, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs for the seasons and for days and years. Uh, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly uh, the moving creature that hath life and the fowl that may uh, fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Um, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Uh, and God said, uh, well, that goes on, that's 26. So we'll stop it right there on verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. And then we'll get back in uh, to verse 26. But God spoke everything into existence. He is the creator of everything just by simply, simply speaking the words. Um, that's a lot of power uh, that he has. And uh, a God, uh, the God, uh, that, can just, that just spoke everything into existence. Uh, he deserves uh, our honor and glory. He deserves our worship because... Uh, he is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. 
Uh, he created everything just by speaking it uh, into existence. In verse 2, the earth described as being without form and void or empty. Initially, there were no stars, there's no planets, uh, but only the basic elements that would be formed, okay, uh, into uh, what we know as, as earth, okay? The early mass was only characterized by darkness, again, referring to the unformed and unfilled status. Uh, in the midst of the, this darkness, God spoke light into existence. Uh, and after he did that, uh, he saw, God saw, uh, that it was good. Uh, and verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, uh, that it was good. And God divided the light uh, from the darkness. And God called the light day, uh, and the darkness he called night. Okay? So, we have night and day. Okay? We have a day here. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, one day, it, when it's talking about one day, people sometimes try to say, well, uh, you know, Peter said as a thousand years is, uh, as one day is a thousand years and a thousand days is one day, you know. Um, okay. Right here in the beginning, when God created everything, um, it was a literal 24-hour day uh, that we're talking about. When we talk about one day, it refers to one literal 24-hour day. Uh, in verse 5 that I just read, and he called the light day and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first uh, day. So in that verse 5, he taught, he uh, he called light uh, day and dark night, evening and morning uh, were, were the first day. Okay, uh, so our 24-hour day, what happens? We have uh, light in the morning, and then guess what? It gets dark uh, in what? In the evening, okay? Uh, that's one day, okay? So these are uh, literal 24-hour days that God created uh, the earth. Um, and so on day one, uh, he, created <clears throat> he created light. Uh, on day two, uh, God displayed his power by establishing boundaries for the waters uh, that had covered the earth. Okay, so that's day two. On day, th on the third day, uh, verses nine through thirteen, um, God created the landmass on which man could live, um, and vegetation uh, which could sustain human life. So He made the landmass and the vegetation. Uh, on day four, uh, God created the sun and the moon and the stars. Uh, these. Uh, would regulate and establish time frames, okay? So he uh, created uh, the sun and the moon and the stars and all of these things and it established the time frames, the days, the nights, uh, the different seasons that we have, the uh, summer, spring, fall, and winter, okay? Um, on day five, uh, God filled the air with birds and the seas with fish, and that's in verses 20 uh, through uh, 23. And then... Uh, on day six, uh, he created uh, the land animals. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Um, so he's taken six days, okay? Uh, right here on the sixth day, uh, he has created uh, land animals, okay? Uh, we need to appreciate the wonder and the beauty and the majesty of our world and worship uh, the magnificent God uh, who designed uh, and created it. Uh, and all he did uh, was just speak it into existence. God said, let there be light. God said, uh, let there uh, be night and day. God said, um, let the earth bring forth living creatures and the cattle and the, uh, the fowl of the air and uh, all of these things. He spoke these things into existence and he did it in six literal days. Okay? Um, humans have a special place uh, in creation. And that's where I left off in verse 26. Uh, it says, And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing uh, that creepeth uh, upon the earth. Uh, so it is here that God created us. He created human life uh, and set it apart from the rest uh, of creation. He uh, made Adam, okay? Uh, and Eve, uh, and he set them uh, above every other creature 
uh, and thing uh, on this earth. Okay, they were to have dominion over all of these things. He was; they were to uh, be the one that was in charge. Okay, uh, that's what he made uh, those for. He said that he made uh, man was made in God's image, and this is an expression used uh, of no other uh, part uh, of creation. Nothing else, none of the animals, nothing else that he had created uh, was made in his image, except um, for human. For, for humans, okay, for Adam and Eve. Um, they were made uh, in his image. It seems that it's very, at its very core, being made in the image of God includes a moral consciousness, the capacity for relationship with God, and an understanding uh, of emotion uh, and beauty. It is through man that the likeness of God uh, is most uh, clearly seen. Others have seen the image of God as relating to man's spiritual capacities to pray, uh, believe in God and discern right from wrong, um, but still others have taught uh, that this simply refers to the fact that man possesses both a soul uh, and a spirit, distinguishing him uh, from the rest of creation. Um, that's pretty amazing that God would uh, see fit uh, for us uh, to have a soul, uh, to be have dominion over all of these things. He created all of this for us. That's great. Right? Uh, he created all of these things, all of these things that we have on this earth, all uh, the sun and the moon and the stars and uh, the different planets and uh, all the trees and the grass and all the different kind of animals and insects and all of this, all of these things. He created it for each and every one of us. He created it uh, for us. Uh, and he tells us, men and women are to have dominion or rule over the rest of creation. Uh, and are to fill uh, the earth or to replenish. Uh, humanity was created to represent God uh, on the earth and to rule over all things in his name. Uh, that is, uh, humans as representatives of God must rule over the creation just as God would. Right? We have came a long, long ways um, from, um, from how things were here, have we not? Um, it's all about me, 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 uh, and nothing about uh, God anymore, is it? Uh, every time you turn around, they're wanting to take uh, God out of everything. They're wanting to take him out of schools. They're wanting to take him out of the Pledge of Allegiance. They're wanting uh, to take him uh, out of the church. He's Anything that they can think of, they want to take God out of. Uh, but God, he put us here on this earth for us to have dominion over everything and for us to rule. Um, the rest of the creation and uh, to fill the earth uh, and we were to represent God uh, on the earth and to rule over everything in his name man what a great place this would be to live if it was still like this today right um, but what happened we know as we go in through Genesis what happened sin entered the world uh, through Adam and Eve uh, being disobedient, uh, and that's why we're in the shape we're in today, okay? Um, could you imagine uh, if things were still like uh, that right there? If we were still uh, being representatives of God like we should be, uh, if we would be, uh, this world would be a lot better place. Uh, after a detailed explanation of the roles of mankind, God stepped back from his creation and stated uh, that it was all uh, very good. Uh, verse 31, uh, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth uh, day. So after everything, after that sixth day, he just stood, he just stepped back um, and just looked at everything that he uh, had created. I was like, man, this is really good. This is very good. Um, and then uh, after that, um, God rested uh, on the seventh day. Okay, uh, and that's our Sabbath day. Okay, uh, this rest was not from exhaustion, as God uh, never re wearies. Uh, it wasn't because He had worked so hard uh, that He just needed a break. Um, it was just uh, so that He could just take all of it in um, and just reflect on the things that He has done. Okay, it wasn't because He was tired, but instead was to establish a pattern that man would be introduced to officially uh, in Exodus 20. 
9 verse 8 and what that verse says in Exodus 20 verse 8 it says uh, remember the Sabbath day uh, to keep it holy uh, our Sabbath day is today is on Sunday okay um, and we are to keep it holy so what does that mean it means we need to come to church we need to do the things that God would have us to do uh, we don't need I know that sometimes and uh, nowadays it's um, you know some of us have to work on the weekends and some of us have to work on Sundays but if we don't have to uh, then we don't need to okay we don't need to work we need to rest and we need to um, uh, just have a God day okay just to not uh, worry about anything to just uh, refresh our lives um, by going to church by getting into his word uh, by getting that spiritual rest uh, that we need and also the physical rest because us that work and we go to school and our weeks are very busy uh, We need that day to just rest uh, and replenish ourselves not only physically uh, But spiritually as well so that we can get through uh, the next week, okay? <clears throat> uh, as we survey creation and we consider the goodness of God we should be driven uh, to worship. So after everything that he has done, after uh, it took six days, he spoke everything into, into existence, and he just stepped back, and he was like, wow, everything is very, very good. Everything that I've created is very good. Um, he deserves uh, our worship. Uh, the God that is all-powerful, uh, the God that is all-knowing, um, he deserves uh, our praise. Uh, and we need to be thankful for all that he has done for us because, again, he did all of this for us so that we uh, could have dominion over all of these things. But we messed up, right? Um, and we need to tell him thank you for everything that he does. We need to ask him to forgive us of our sins. Uh, and we need to just worship him because he deserves uh, our worship. Um, because we are created in God's image, we are highly valued, loved, and provided for. We are to worship our great creator, represent him on earth, and value all uh, human beings. Um, that's what we need to do. Uh, we are to worship our uh, creator, uh, and we need to represent him uh, the best way we can uh, here on this earth. He has given us everything. Um, if you are a child of God, uh, then you need to be living like one, and you need to be uh, uh, giving back uh, to God the praise. Uh, and honor and glory that he deserves, the worship that he deserves. Um, why? Because he loves us. Uh, he created all of these things uh, for us, um, and we need to worship him for it. Okay? Um, I hope that you've got something out of this lesson today. Um, just hope that you have a great rest of the day, um, and I'll see you next time.